I mean, in this book, I, I, I shared the most vulnerable parts of who I am that, that in some instances were so triggering to write, but I knew it was a powerful thing to, to share. This is part of who I am, and as difficult as it is to write about it, as triggering as it is, as traumatic as it sounds like, it's, it's a healing process, and I felt like I'm healed. Gina, it's been such a whirlwind last few months for you uh, promoting this book. First of all, congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations on all the accolades that the book is receiving. Congratulations on all the book sales. And now <laughs> your book tour, everything. I have so much to ask you. Uh, but first, what are what are your top five favorite moments from the last few weeks? I feel like I'm, I'm back in my pageant scene. Top five. Okay, yeah. what do I have? <laughs> yeah, I was at the White House yes. um, when I got confirmation that I'm going to the White House to share Horace Barbie to a couple of folks there. And the one that was really touching was I brought my trans sister, Ara, who I've known since I was 15 years old. We used to join pageants together and to be the two of us there at the White House. I mean, my book party in New York City was, inc I mean... With your mom? With my mom, <laughs> dancing to Dancing Queen. Wow. And the next day, my mom said to me, you know, when they were leaving back, uh, you know, New York, she said, I felt like I was a celebrity last night. You were a celebrity, mom. You know, people were like coming up to her. Forest New York Times, the profile of the New York Times. You know, you don't get to see, you know, things on print anymore. So there's that excitement. I guess just the fact that when I'm doing interview, um, in all aspects of my interview, I bring in my trans mother, Tiger Lily, into the conversation because my life, my, my journey into, you know, trans beauty pageants at 15, which I felt like I've entered this magical world, she did it for me. I mean, she gave me the, the name Horace Barbie. The title of the book is because of her. But also not just that. You're bringing in the culture of the Philippines, what the Philippines is like mm -hmm. in your interviews and also in your book. And so because there's so many interviews already uh, <laughs> with you in English, magtaglish tayo. Uh, oh, right? okay. oh, go. So, there was a time when your story um, was hidden, mm -hmm. all right? Now it's being celebrated. Did you ever think, na, naisip mo ba na dadating yung panahon na ito, na ipagdiriwang yung kwento mo, yung ikaw mismo, na hindi mo na kailangan magtago? Oh, Janelle, this is, napaka, you know, pag nag, pinag uusapan to, parang bumabalik yung mga emosyon na maraming taon na hindi ko akala eh, na pwede akong maging as I am in public na to, to speak about fully as I am na kasi yung mga pinagdaanan ko sa buhay lalo na nung nasa New York ako ng, na as a model na lagi ako nagtatago na piling-pili yung mga taong inaalaw ko sa mundo ko, sa buhay ko, sa, sa, sa my circle na now to be here to, to speak about this na eto na siya na yung, yung, yung kultura natin sa Pilipinas tsaka yung mga yung mga kinakatakot ko, yung mga pinagdaanan ko, mga ups and down roller coaster ng, 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 ng buhay ko na finally it's it's in a book and I'm I'm here to honor that and and really acknowledge yung pasasalamat ko na hindi ako bumitaw, you know never a moment na, na I was surrounded na yung mga support system ko sa buhay ko particularly pamilya ko. In the book, you, uh, when you were five or six years old, you mm -hmm. talk about this moment, and I feel like ito yung simula ng journey mo mm -hmm, eh, mm -hmm. at five years old mm -hmm. when you looked in the mirror. Mm -hmm. You know, I was still in that little esquinita where I grew up in Makati. I was always outside. I was mm -hmm. cold na lagi ako yung batang lagi na sa labas because mm -hmm. I always played outside. Whether patintero, tumbang sipa, preso. tumbang preso, <laughs> all of it. In as much na marami akong kaibigan, kasi you know, we're, we all grew up together, my childhood friend. Every time na mag express ako na yung femininity ko, pag may kumikembot ako, tinutukso ako lagi. So that moment when I was at home, looking at myself in the mirror, I was about to take a shower. And looking at myself in, in, in our mirror, I clearly remember what the texture and, and the color of that mirror and looking at myself, the reflection for the very first time, I saw myself. And at the same time, I was wearing this Boltus 5 t-shirt on my head, you know, that t-shirt that my papa gave me. And it felt like that hair, the t-shirt was my hair. Mm -hmm. And it felt, you know, unang, the very first time that I recognized ko sa sarili ko na 
babae ako. You know, I'm a little girl. I really felt it deep in my spirit. Mm -hmm. I think that was the time you allowed yourself to see the real you mm -hmm. and to listen to you. Mm -hmm. That truth na na recognize ko sa sarili ko, like I want to keep that with me because unfortunately, every time I go outside their house, nandun ko na experience yung at a young age na pagpapasok ako sa school, sa elementary school, yung mga tricycle driver, lalo na yung mga lalaking tricycle driver, they feel the need na talagang sigawan ka na, tukso ka ng bakla, bakla at a young age you know, to, to experience that. And that did a lot to me. I think that really instilled fear. And at a young age, I, I knew, I recognized that the world na parang not readily accepting of, of you know, my feminine spirit. What's going for you really well, and unlike the others with others that I've interviewed, is that your family accepted you mm -hmm. from the get-go. Mm -hmm. And they not only accepted you, they supported you. Mm -hmm. Lalo na yung tatay mo. Yeah, when they do t interviews, and uh, when his name and his, you know, our, our relationship together comes up, it's, it's the one that gets me really emotional because I've been speaking so much about my mom and the value and the importance of our deep and close relationship. I mean, my mom is a devout Catholic woman that loves yung trans Filipina na daughter niya. Like, there, there, there's no contradiction in that. It just is, you know? But my dad, my papa, who is the typical macho guy na, you know, he's known that he's actually someone feared in our community because yung his stance, also tendency to be violent, you know, when, when he starts drinking. But then the way he, he treated me, the way he yung trato niya sa akin na yung talagang purong pagmamahal lang na and there is not one moment. Like even no nagsusulat ako ng libro ko, kinlaro ko talaga. Kinausap ko yung ate ko, kinausap ko yung mama ko, kinausap ko. Like meron ba talagang Instance and moment na nagalit sa akin si Papa kasi nga, you know, na femboy ako. They're like, we couldn't remember anything. And I just truly appreciate that. And I think in, when I wrote this book, one of the, the takeaways for me when I was writing it is kung gaano ka-importante yung influence ng Papa ko sa sarili ko towards first accepting myself because he accepted me because this is this is a relationship that should have been turbulent that should have been you know um full of contradictions and 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 and, and pressure but he allowed me to be free in papa ko. what would you say to the filipino parents mm. na let me begin by saying like i had to go through this in my own um understanding you know when i was in the philippines i was just expressing myself i had to leave the philippines for me to understand some of the root causes kung bakit ba that in as much as meron tayong you know outwardly visibility ng lgbtq people but we have this very intense pressure of influence of patriarchy through catholicism unfortunately catholicism you know despite what the changes now still preaches to hate LGBTQ people, it's still very much like that. So there is a contradiction for sure. But one thing I'd say is that if your child just wants to be who they are, to play, to express, to to express their truth, let them be. But I also understand it's also generational. There's also that aspect. This is very much embedded in our culture, gender fluidity, being being gay, being bakla, being tomboy, being however the definition and how it changes. In our language, Tagalog, we don't even have he or she. We have siya, which is gender neutral. It is, it is in our language, the understanding of gender fluidity. I think you said it. I yeah. think it's it, it stems from understanding. Mm -hmm. We need to understand. Ang nangyayari kasi sa Philippines, yeah. kumbaga tolerance, yeah. eh, if you really think about it, yeah. it's not acceptance means embracing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Sa Pilipinas, uh, you know, trans people are culturally visible, right? We're part of mainstream society, LGBTQ people, but we're not politically recognized right. as trans people, meaning our our documentation doesn't reflect who we are. You know, I would still be M on my on my documents you know, in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. 
What does that mean? It means the government does not see trans people as full citizens. How could you fully contribute in society if your identification doesn't match who you if are? you're not recognized as, as who you as are. As who you are. Yes, in, yes. All, and it affects all aspects of our lives. Yes, it is tolerated in the Philippines. It's part of culture. Pero tingnan mo sa culture. Yeah. Katatawanan. Comedians. Yeah. Yeah. It's visible, so that's one thing. You know, right. it, it helps to see your see it yourself in right. media, so that's one. Right. But I think the bigger conversation is equity, you know, yes. which is like yes. e equitable representation. Exactly. You know, I yes. mean, for trans people, I mean, for me, when I was joining pageants in the Philippines, gay trans beauty pageants happens during Catholic celebration. Celebrations. It's yes. symbiotic with fiesta yes. celebration, and it's usually put on by the government. Right. And during election. Right. It is the most crowded for politicians to, you know, to to say their platform. Right. So there's a certain hypocrisy to that. Mm -hmm. You know, for us, it's our way to make money because there's a lot of trans pageant. That was my career when I was 15. For some folks, maybe, you know, for the government, for, you know, the Catholic Church, they might just see that as an entertainment, you know. I learned how to be trans in the Catholic Church. Oh. Gina Rosero is so hot these days. Hot topic din po, of course, ang kanyang story. And, you know, hot topic, as we all know, LGBTQ issues as well. And so we are uh, privileged to be able to share her story and to be able to open that discussion dito po sa ating programang So Janelle TV. Of course, uh, tamang-tama naman po ang pagiging hot because this summer is expected to be really hot as well. And that is why we invite you to chill with McDonald's. Sip into summer. Try McDonald's refreshing new frozen Hawaiian fruit punch or choose a frozen Fanta blue raspberry. Enjoy one for a cool treat today at participating McDonald's.